And my homie, um, her she, name is Laurel. She was the one picking up Mac Miller. So oh, she thought she yeah. just showed up for Mac. Oh, oh, like, showed up for like, Mac. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, 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 nah. I'm just, we're just, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just the, picking up yeah, to take him and drop him off. I'm here for the job. You know? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Monarch Social Podcast, where we discuss all things digital media marketing. In hopes to give you, the viewers at home, a little bit of insight into this digital marketing world, which we all live in. Hell yeah. So I am so excited for this episode today. I'm, I'm beyond uh, elated that our guest is here. Um, we have Iraq and yeah, I don't even know if yes, he need, has needs an introduction, honestly. You guys are too kind. Mr. Yusa over here. They're, you guys are sweet. You know, when I was preparing for this podcast and I was going through the many things that you have done, mm-hmm. there was just too damn many. <laughs> I, this was like a two-pager. For I don't real. know. Usually man. it's a one-pager. You might have looked up the wrong e rock dog. <laughs> I don't know. So <laughs> for those that don't know, tell us, tell our base. Um, yeah. We mostly work with business owners, CEOs, marketing professionals, and then obviously friends and family. But tell them about U92, yeah, and sure. I think that's what you're currently doing right now. Yeah, and this is obviously an everywhere platform, so maybe if they're not from here. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. Right? Like, you want to know what the hell it is. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, U92 is the place where my full-time gig is. And that's, like, my Monday through Sunday, you know what I mean? And um, it's a local, locally owned and operated uh, full signal, full FM radio station, and it's the only one of its kind. Um, which is it's 24 seven, a hip hop station. Hell yeah. No disrespect to the other stations who do, you know, like the local radio guys, those are the homies. A lot of them actually worked there at one right. point yeah. and made jumps. Um, there's definitely radio, other stations doing, especially on the local level, uh, hip hop shows. So I don't want to discount that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, ours has always been that. So I work there. Um, I do currently the morning shows, uh, Monday through Friday. And then, I've actually started there as a mixer, so like an on-air DJ, nice. mixer on the turntables, never really talking. That was like probably my first eight or nine years. Hell really? Yeah. That long? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, part of the U crew with, uh, you know, U92. Mm-hmm. And you've been there for 15 years, and I think, Sheesh. right? Crazy, and you, right? Went to, you went to the mornings in 2003. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, so it was uh, three. I did the morning show. I started the morning show about almost three years ago. Hell. Maybe like two years ago. I started in the afternoon, um, five to six, doing uh, a mix, a drive time mix, their first ever prime time drive time mix. Right. And I did that forever. Nice. Yeah. And um, how yeah. did you? So we'll 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 back up just a sec. Yeah. When you so you 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 moved here from San Francisco. Uh huh. Okay. Then so you, I actually stopped in the East Coast first. Oh, where at? Um, in kind of northern Virginia area. I'm DC from area. Virginia. I grew up in Virginia. <laughs> what, what part? Stafford. Okay, that's what's up. That's so the where I first, graduated. So the first time I ever went to Virginia, this was random because um, I'm kind of skipping ahead. Sorry, but no, you're fine. Uh, before I lived there, I went there. Okay. Okay, and the and and I had like a gig to do in uh, Richmond, and I had no idea Virginia. I just remember going to the gas station, and they had like the bulletproof the glass. glass. <laughs> and like literally, like I wanted a cup of noodles, you know, because like I was broke, and like I wanted to eat something, you know, at the hotel. And they had to literally try and shove it through this small like <laughs> the delivery <little>. system. <laughs> yeah. So Virginia is like a crazy place, like in certain well, places. See, yeah. I I had that same experience, but I was in L.A. It was a, one right. of, one of the very first yeah. times I went to L.A. We went to a goddamn Taco Bell, uh-huh. and I'm feel, I'm getting like prison syrup through a slit in the yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was real. like, what? Is it's this? for real. That is just, that's how it is. That's how it is. Kind of in the Bay Area too, though. Yeah, that's, that's how it is true. All there. So Virginia yeah, first, Virginia, and then Maryland for like a year and a half. Oh, nice. I was in Southern Maryland. Okay, I was in Bowie. Okay, yeah, Prince George's yeah. County. Nice, yeah, nice man. And um, and then I ended up here in two thousand and three. Nice. You're in Utah. Yeah. And so it sounds like you were already that you said you had a show in in Virginia. So how so did when you I get... say that? Okay. I want to clarify that moment. <laughs> it's like saying, a kegger party. Like a... <laughs> it was like my sister. She was going to a college out there. Had me come out and DJ. Give, nice. Given I was like barely seventeen, eighteen. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't like I was out there doing clubs, you know, like that <laughs> shit actually started here. 
Oh, nice. really? Yeah, and, and once I got with the station and all that, yeah. Would you say that out here in Utah is, like, really where... 100%. You were like, hey, I'm doing this full time. Well, it just happened that way. It just fell in your lap. I had no idea. I okay. genuinely got into DJing just for the art of it. Um, you know, where I grew up in the Bay, long before laptop DJing and all that shit, like, there were already DJs DJing, like, three turntable sets, all vinyl, mm. on the radio at, like, noon... Like, real times. So yeah. Like, DJ culture has definitely come from New York, but also the Bay Area, like, big time. Oh, yeah. And a lot of my heroes that I looked up to watching, for example, there's, like, a championship, world championship DJ contest that's been really? going on since, like, the late 80s. And I used to buy those videotapes and, like, watch them and want to, like, be like that, learn how to scratch and all that. So, yeah. Sick. It's been, like, it's crazy, yeah, because the, the professional side of it and the money-making side of it happened here. Okay. And before that, it was just high school parties, you know, was, shit I could get into. Yeah, I was going to say, well, how, did, how, did, how did you get hooked up with uh, United, United 2? Two. So yeah. it, you're going to laugh at this. And this is perfect because you guys are like a digital marketing, right? So it's, the, it's in the beginning of MySpace. Oh, oh no yeah. way. So, like, no yo, way. I had the glitter graphic out profile. Oh, oh HTML out. HTML for dummies. <laughs> yeah. by my side. You know what I mean? Um, I just put up a music page when they first introduced music pages. And... Um, Funny enough, I was working like retail, like I told you, like I had a kid young, I was just working hourly jobs, trying to pay rent and, and just make it. And, um, it, my space was the place I would put up like my edits, my remixes mm -hmm. I would record. Um, because I was just DJing like in my house, like just for me yeah, and like yeah. the love of it and thinking, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm a dropout, you know, with a GD and I gotta, I gotta grind, right. I got a kid to pay for so it never crossed my mind at all. And it wasn't until U92 found my MySpace page. Dude, no way. And they had me enter a DJ contest. So there was a DJ contest between four DJs, and one of them was going to win a job. So I got invited to do this, and I was like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? So Best DJ wins a job. Yeah, <laughs> and it was sick. just like I literally was just thinking the whole time, like, oh, my gosh, I get to meet other DJs in Utah. Like, I actually get to, like, see these guys, like, who I hear on the radio on my way to my job. And, mm -hmm. like, it was just that. Like, literally, the, the last night of the contest was, like, right outside the station. And you got to bring your family and friends, obviously, to cheer you on. Mm -hmm. And all my crowd was literally in red and khaki because I was working at Target at the time. Yeah. Like, they all came, Sick. like, on their lunch break, you know what I mean, to come support me. And it was like, who is this kid? You know what I mean? It's like just some kid working at Target. You know, it's so it's the Target <laughs> army shows up. Yeah. Roll up. Yeah. So that's, that's how I got my foot in the door. I, I, I ended up winning the contest, which was crazy. And um, that's pretty yeah. smart of you 92 also like that's like free content for them. Oh, and for dude, sure. Like, and then you get to pick the best of the best to like join what, the team. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, it, yeah, let's have sick. a contest. Get the coolest DJs in Utah that we can find yeah. on MySpace. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we're going to walk away with the best one. Yeah. I'm going to be real. Like that's what radio still does best to this day, because obviously, you know, streaming platforms have have been born and are out there. And, you know, I even during the pandemic, right? Like our business is really affected because, you know, everyone was out of their car and you know, radio is like mostly in the car. Oh yeah. Think about it. Nobody's like yeah. sitting in the oh, living yeah. room anymore like the fifties. <laughs> you know, trying around, to tune in show. I, I don't know how many people are out there. Um, we have a, a <laughs> Google in here, so I don't know if it's going to hear me, but it's like, hey Google, play iHeartRadio. You right. know, I don't know how many people are doing Actually, that. Actually, oh, right. yeah. They heard right. me, you might want to unplug that out. <laughs> so, hey Google, stop. Okay, good, yeah, go away. We don't need you. Hey Google, stop. Silence. I'm sorry about that, but anyway, dude, that's one feature I wish that some sort of social platform would bring back the whole MySpace audio. Like, yeah. I loved how when you'd go on somebody's profile, it would start playing music. Yo, my profile's still up. Is it really? It looks crazy, obviously, you know, because they've changed it. You We're know, gonna and then it didn't work with all the stuff you put on it. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna yeah. link the uh, E Rock's MySpace. I want to <laughs> say it's. In it's our, in our, I want to <laughs> say it's forward slash U ninety two Raka. That's what Ooh, it is. Nice. Yeah, that's what it is. I like but I bet Alice is on there too because it was like those days, like the club days. That's yeah. Sick. For those listening, yeah. Alice is my oh, sister. Sorry. She works with us here at uh, at Monarch Social. So, yeah. but that's how you got. That's how you got started. And that that's that was the first kind of step into. Oh my gosh! Like this is actually going to be something for me. Yeah. Besides just you know trying to just get you know local gigs or whatever, right? But once again, at the time I was so young and so like so much pressure to like you know, pay bills. Like when you got kids, like it really costs money. Oh, yeah. And, um, 
you know, that's that's where I just never thought. But once it happened, um, yeah, the story started. What were, what were they having you do? Like right so off the that's gate. the funny part, right? They didn't really ever say, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you get a job, but then what is it? So it is actually technically like still not employed, but like as like a contractor. So they had at the time when they brought me in, they were only like DJing late nights on the weekend on the, on the radio. And then they would use the DJs at events or client things, right? So we call them remotes. So when you see like the van out in the street, and mm. it's at some business and we're promoting it for two hours, they call that a radio remote. And that's all I was really doing for like the first nine months. Mm-hmm. I was just, every time one would pop up, oh, it's an extra whatever in my pocket. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go do it. Even if I was like working my day job, I'm like, mm. I'll, do, I'll go do that. I'm going to show them I'm, I'm into this. And then nine months down the road, the program director at the time approached me at a remote and was like, hey, man, I see how dedicated you are. Uh, You know, every time I'm at your remotes, your mixes are fire. He was like, what if we did the first ever primetime drive time mix show? I'm like, tell me when. I'll start right (laughs) now. Say less. Let's go. Pull out the mixtapes from your bag. Here we go. I was ready. Here's my records. I mean, I was literally taking, like, my lunch breaks to go and do it and then Go back to So you were doing a full-time job and this on the side? 100%. As a matter of fact, I was doing the Target job, but I was also working part-time at like a Borders Cafe. No way. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was working. It was crazy. Grinding. It's all about that hustle life, it it sounds like. It's cool. I mean, that's the one thing I will say that I was kind of grown up knowing, right? Like, that's the one thing. That's probably the only lesson my parents ever taught me, which was be a man, deal with your shit. Do what you got to do. Confront it and do what you got to do, and you got to make it happen. Ain't nobody going to give it to you. you yeah, know what I mean? do those hard things. Yeah. Put in the work. That's sick. Yeah. And one of the things with U92 also, and this is one of the big reasons that I was super excited to have you on here, is that you're the program director, brand manager yeah. for U92 as well. So <laughs> From what, pop-ups to project manager. So what the go. hell does that involve? <laughs> Because I, I think I know, because yeah, you know, you do some stuff, but I would yeah. love to hear your perspective of how you got that A. Okay. And like, what does that consist it's, of? It's actually a great story. So I was with, like I said, I was just doing the DJ thing with them for like nine years. So we literally moved from one ownership to another during that time, new building, and I was still mixing in the afternoon. And then at the end of the second ownership, near the end, um, they had this crazy guy who went by the name Tic Tac and he was only here for like, I know, and he was only here for like six months and he's one of the, cause in radio, a lot of people, what they do is they just like, they're kind of like grifters. They just move from market to market, mm. get a job somewhere better. Right. Mm-hmm. That's part of the grind. You, you, you gotta like fight for yourself that way. Right. And Hell sometimes yeah. things aren't going to work out. And that guy, before he left, he was like, he was the one who brought back the mix show in the afternoon. So it stopped for a minute there when we changed owners and when he wanted to bring it back because he was in the afternoon he was like who's the guy we call so everyone vouched for me for whatever reason and said call him so i came in and i did it with him and for like two weeks straight so in this it was this it was a small suit it was like a quarter of the size no way yeah it was a lot smaller really and then there was like kind of this window that was fogged and that's where the program director at the time sat Got you. So every day for two weeks, he was like, yo, E, bang on that window. So I bang on the window. <laughs> he would come in. He'd be like, what now? And then he would go, e going to tell you why he could run this brand. Oh, shit. So every day he challenged me to tell this guy. Why you're going to do it. Why I could do it. And like what I think. Like my honest opinions. And so it led me into the assistant program director position, finally. And so it started there. And then as I grew with it, obviously, and started to get my hands on it, people in there thankfully figured out like, oh, we need someone like him to run this, you know, because it's it's a culture lifestyle brand. Like at the end of the day, yes, it's about the music. Yes, it's about the artists, it's about hip hop, it's about all that. But it's also like, you know how it goes in corporate situations. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes they're not awake to that, you know, that they don't realize right. like, yo, you got people around you who could literally do this yeah. instead of you guys banging your head against the wall, wondering why this or that doesn't work. So, and do you think, and I mean, what I've seen too in businesses and especially like in our lifetime yeah. is 
corp- more corporate jobs needing kind of like that new wave of talent and that new wave yeah. of thinking, that new wave of, you know, yeah. marketing. I think the smart companies are doing that. That's what yeah. smart companies are doing. Yeah. And yeah, I, I completely sure. agree with that. And so I think that that was probably huge for U92 to get someone like you yeah. to think differently, you know, yeah. like step outside of the corporate world and totally. bring some real to it. And yes. like no knocks on some of the people that, that will, might watch this, but there's older digital marketing people that just think so different than us. And I've met them yeah. and, and I'm talking to these old cats that came from like newspaper or, right. you know, TV or something like that. And they think yeah. it translates. And a lot of times it, it, there's stuff that does, but a lot of times it does. A lot of times it's the opposite. A lot of times that stuff just doesn't work the way it used to work. Yeah. So what do you say to people? Oh, wait, sorry. Let's keep going. No, what it, so what does that position entail then? Oh, okay. So, I mean, traditionally program director of a station is the person who basically builds the framework like all the ins and outs of the music so whether it's the the music process how we select music the moves we make with records um but it's also equally shared with like i basically have to feed the sales team and my sales manager all the creative and all the shit that we actually want to do and how we sell it so it's kind of both it's kind of like half running the day-to-day scheduling the music, working with the jocks to make them better, right? Working with the promotions team to make sure we're out there and doing all the right things. But it's also how the hell do we sell this, right? How do we overcome ratings challenges? Um, It's a lot. For sure. And certain like groups have obviously like, you know, we're a locally owned one. So our resources are different. Than like when you hear an iHeart or a Cumulus where they're like have 300 stations across the country. So they have, you know, departments and a tower in the middle of the country and they have all these things. Right. Mm-hmm. It sounds like I'm working 10 jobs because I kind of am. Yeah. But that's how it is at our level of radio. And um, to be honest, I think it, it builds it builds more character and you learn way more about the business because you're connected to all of all it. All of it. Yeah. And that's what I'm thankful for with that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's sick. Did you have any Things you want well, to just randomly, I've always been curious. Do you get to choose like any of the music that's out there to put on the radio? So here's the thing, right? That's always the biggest question. And yes, at one point, okay, and you got to remember, once again, I said radio's old, right? right yeah. So there was a time where nothing was automated. I mean, and this wasn't that long ago, to be honest with you. Like there was still, when it went from records to tapes to CDs, there was a person in there. Plug in. Physically. DJ <laughs> yeah. in the studio. You know what I mean? When I joined in, there was automation. There was obviously computers. The internet existed. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, there's way more automation now. And so really when I say music selection, all that, yeah, like Mondays, every Monday, it's kind of the industry thing in radio. We all look at the analytics. We look at the charts. We look at our local data. And that's something too, right, where I want to go back to like the iHearts and all that in the world, not Mm -hmm. to knock them, but, you know, those program directors don't even get to select anything. Right. They're sent from the This is your pool of what you guys get to have. Because they draw from a national perspective. Mm -hmm. Whereas as a local station, I care more about the local analytics. Where do you get those analytics? That's actually what I was going to ask, too. That's one of the big things that we, in our thing, is everything that we do digitally, we can analyze with data. Track. It's just everything's tracked. I know how many people clicked your link how many people yeah. were on your damn website we know everything yeah you know so how do you guys do analytics so in radio? Uh, there is media base which is kind of the standard the industry standard they're a company that basically surveys the top 50 markets and we're like market 29 out of all of them just to let mm-hmm. you know we're actually a bigger oh. market than vegas some markets wow, that people sick. don't realize congratulations yeah. Yeah, well it's utah it's population and it's we're getting bigger too like it's growth exactly yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we have those tools. We subscribe to those tools. It's part of the business model. If you want to be on the panels, what they call it. And, uh, once again, uh, we look at na- we do also look at national analytics cause I care about, you know, obviously if the whole country's moving with something that must mean something, right. or if I'm looking at specific stations or markets that are strategically smart for us to look at because they have similar fights this way mm. or similar things that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's there's an art to it, right? Like sure. I have to kind of balance all the analytics, but yeah, there's tools you subscribe to. Obviously, um, we have partnerships with major record labels, so they always update us on all their awesome. analytics and what they see. 
Uh, they compile a lot of the streaming data for me. Oh, awesome. Right? I'll get a report of literally week by week what everyone is streaming the most between all the platforms. Um, some of the platforms obviously don't release information, mm. i.e. Spotify. is Yeah, one hostage. Uh, I think Apple Music is pretty tight, too, with some of the stuff they release. But anyways, um, yeah, it's a mixture of... That's the thing, too. I'm going to be real, right? Like, I grew up in the era of radio where it was really like when I would turn on the radio, I really turned it on for the mixers, the DJs. Right. And those guys really, you know, now that I'm in the business, I understand how it works. You're kind of given a set of guidelines. Mm -hmm. But depending on your program director and who will let you wild out or not, I was tuning in for that because it was different. Right. And so that's where there's a big part of having gut in this. Yeah. Because it's like... That's why I employ DJs that I know are out there three, four, five nights a week because their feedback too matters. So to, to answer your question, hella long winded, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I love it. I, I, if I were just to pick off personal taste, the station would be crazy. Right. That's why I've always wondered. I'm like, yeah. dude, there's so, I hear people playing songs at the clubs and stuff and I'm like, if they should, they should put this on the radio. Yes. Like it's weeks before it actually gets put on the radio or good and bad. Our business is, is dictated by advertising and advertising is, is absolutely affected by um, your rating. So there's a system that we're part of. That system dictates where you fall on a list to agencies, mm. which is a big part of our revenue. And for good and bad, analytics kind of in a good way and bad way ruin radio a little yeah. bit. Because it's true. It's about it's getting governed. as much people the as you masses. can get. So that's why you hear those more mass appeal records rising mm -hmm. to the top and playing a lot. A lot. Yeah. Because those are the records everyone is streaming and listening to. Not everyone's as cool as Morgan and Koa. You know what I'm saying? Like, You're goddamn right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and, and me, right? Like, It's like my tastes have evolved. I'm a DJ. I obviously like For to sure. dig. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to be way more advanced. Right? Way more. You're going to know when those new ones are always coming out. Yeah. And yeah. not even that, but just like digging you know a lot of digging is just part of dj culture so there's kind of this funny fight i have internally with myself because i have to be very disciplined and like kind of respect a system that quite frankly i don't really agree with all the time right. and it dictates a lot of what we do musically yeah it makes sense and, it makes sense and to be fair you know like with radio like radio is a business they, yeah. they're, they're trying to make it a, a buck you know they're, yep. they're making their money and so they're going to choose the things that have the best ratings they're going to choose the, the things people. that are popular the things that are trending and right. and that's what's going to pull people in and that's what's going to give those awesome analytics and that's what people are going to pay you a lot of money to correct. advertise with so correct at the end of the day it's a business you know yeah. and so as much as you want to play you know the other myspace Some dj that's records right. out there that's right um we're going with drake you know or something right <laughs> <laughs> right, right. What's your What's your favorite part of uh, being with U ninety two? Like, it, like your favorite thing there? So, you know, not to get too sappy, but you know, when I when I left home, like I was kind of hinting to, you know, my goal was just like, got to take care of this new family I got, right? So, going back to what you said, I think that's the interesting part, right? Like that's why it's hard for me because I came in it with passion only, right? I didn't think of it from any of that perspective. From a business right? standpoint, like I sound like yeah. a, a monster compared to like if you talk to me when I started, right? right? Ask me about it, and because you kind of get you see it and you get it now. Yeah, and it's kind of like yo, like that's the shitty part, right? Like yeah. that's the part about mm -hmm. the world I don't like, right? Like that's just me. However, I also I, I will say to answer your question, man, um, I think my favorite part so far has been the opportunities that I've gotten through it and because of it. And then the opportunities I've been able to give back. Mm. And see, that's where radio separates itself from the streaming platforms. You have to remember, we can absolutely have the local connection they can't. So, for example, when DJ Eurocalypse shows up at a high school to do lunch takeovers and spread some good vibes, make the kids know we care about them, make them feel special for a day because they already go through shit, right? Right. And also spread positivity, like, you know, with uh, how Utah has the biggest uh, youth suicide rate in the country. Absolutely. People don't even know that, right? Um, doing those kind of things through it, through the brand, um, has been my favorite part. That's really my favorite part, is, like, giving that magic back, but then also pulling people into it. Yeah. You know? And, and I've seen people, obviously, in this business, people come and go. But that's been also the other favorite part, is, like, watching people, like, who never thought like I did 
right? Have a shot, putting him on, starting him somewhere. Yeah. If it's just weekends or late in the middle of the night, and then seeing them grow from that to like a major day part, then going from there to like a bigger market or to, you know, shout out to JR who went from here to like Dubai and is like doing radio out there. Crazy. And wow. like running yeah. stuff out there. Yeah. That's like quite crazy. the change. Yeah. Those are the things. That's sick. And of course, because it started with music, right? For me, it's like the music the and core. DJing. So I've been able to meet all my DJ heroes that I never thought. They come to my station and like do sets. Like it's crazy, That's, right? It's like mind blowing. It's, you, it's like you're living in a dream, you know, working with all these amazing people that you've had to, the opportunity to work with before, right? Yeah. yeah. What's it's, that like? Is it just. It's trippy. So one of my favorite meetings was with Mac Miller. Oh, hell yeah. It was on his like last, unfortunately, we didn't know, right? His last tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the U Lounge. That's right. Right. Yeah. So he came by the station. Uh, and funny, funny story with that too. Like, you know, he was with Ariana Grande at the time, so she was with him. And so my homie Laurel at Warner Brothers went to go pick him up, right? And she answered the door and was like, because Laurel's like a good looking person. Like <laughs> she, she was like, she was like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, I'm just here to pick up Mac. He's got a radio visit. Like we're going to go bring him over right Wait, now. Wait, he was talking to Ariana? No, no. So yeah. Ariana was. Answered the door. Answered, answered the, door. the door. Hotel room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and instead of Mac. And my homie. Um, her she, name is Laurel. She was the one picking up Mac Miller. So oh, she thought she yeah. just showed up for Mac. Oh, oh, like, showed up for like, Mac. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. I'm just, we're just, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just the, picking up yeah, to take him and drop him off. I'm here for the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just here for the radio station. Just imagine Ariana just like piss. Exactly. That is so crazy to yeah, think and, about, um, man. And then we ended up, after the event, also going to Zest and he really loved us a lot. Mm. Like he was about that life. I, I, I love meat and all that, but I went anyways. And um, anyways, that was really special. Cause one, I'm a, I'm a big fan. As you could tell, like I'm wearing his hoodie today, nice. oh, um, but two, that was probably one of the most genuine conversations I've had with an artist because that's the other side of it. Right. That, that, that saying like, don't meet your heroes. is kind of real. Most of the time, a lot of these guys are douchebags. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, or they're like, you know, you got to be real too and give them like credit. Like, you know, sometimes these major labels are making them do these things rather than asking or, you know, so they come in with a bad attitude, but Mac was just the coolest, Sick. nicest, most normal dude. Um, and, you know, sadly, once again, he passed shortly after that. And so that's always going to mean something to me, you know, yeah. that I got to meet him. That's special, man. That's yeah. a, that, that is a huge special that moment. That is like man. special, special. And, and that's just one of many of yeah. really big artists that you've met. I mean, I've seen, I've seen pictures with, with The Weeknd and Bruno Mars yeah. and even Those Dave Chappelle. Crazy. And, yeah. you know, and, and one of the things, too, and kind of to maybe move into this next question sure. that I have for sure. you is I saw you got to, you had the privilege of giving a jersey to uh, yeah. a certain someone. Why don't it's you tell a, us about that? To Ice Cube. That's so, right. Yeah, man, that was wild. Um, so he headlined one of our big throwback jams. We do like a big throwback show with the station every year. And Cube has historically always done the best for our station period when it comes to that era. Utah loves him. Like yeah. he has like four songs where he shouts out Utah. Like across his career, I didn't know. Really, that. I didn't yeah, know that he's either. got a lot of love for Utah because what you got to remember too is, you know, we're kind of still as much as people will laugh probably at this that are on the West Coast, we're kind of considered still the West Coast to these artists because there are a lot of transplants, there are a lot of people who come in and out of here, even just for work or whatnot, and you know, once again. Um, Having all those moments and leading up to that day, it was crazy. Um, I'm I'm the DJ for our pro soccer team out here, Real Salt Lake. Yep. So they asked me. They were like, "E, can you give him a custom jersey?" And I was like, "I'll try. Like, uh, why not? You know." So it was after the show. Went back to the green room. Brought you know as many people as I could with me to meet him, and um, got to give him his own custom Real Salt Lake jersey. That's sick. And, so um, sick. it was dope. Yeah. He even put it on after and yeah. really, dude, yeah. That yeah, is so cool. I saw the photos of that. Speaking of Real, cause you just dropped that casually. Oh yeah. I'm just, you know, the official yeah. DJ of Real Salt Lake. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did that come to pass? Like, so how, here's, is that just with being with U92? Yeah. Or so I was going to say, yeah. So, uh, until this year, actually we had the same owner, but, Obviously, it wasn't like, oh, just because we're the same owner, it just happened. It was a build. It was a build for sure. Um, it started with us just offering the fact that as radio stations, obviously, 
we could pull up and pull a crowd. Right. So they were like, oh, prior to the game, let's do like a plaza thing where we have all the stations out. We invite people. People go win free shit. You know, come hang out. That little Be party out front. Up. Yeah, it's yeah. that. And we still do it to this day. Yeah. Um, but then, um, you know, shout out to my boy, Taylor, who is uh, who runs our um, Real Media sector of our Broadway media family. And um, that's like our digital agency, kind of, you know, mm-hmm. like what you guys do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, he's always been very tight with the club because he's just a huge fan also and has worked his way into that. That's why they're called Real Media. And um, he was the one who put it in their ears like, why don't you guys have a DJ? So it first started with me and two other guys that I've, you know, that I have on the roster that DJ on the station. We would rotate it. It eventually turned into they wanted me to do it solely. And um, and then, yeah, so to this day, we're doing it. Hell yeah. That's yeah. sick. Dude, that's way sick. Yeah, I've that never been cool. to a Real Salt Lake game, and oh, that's, on. it's on my bucket They're fun, list. It's dude. on my bucket list. They're I, fun. And I, okay. I've been saying it next, for like... I've next game, you guys are coming. Dude, I would oh, love to. I would love to. It's already done. Come and hang out in the booth with me. And Oh. Yeah. Dude, it, there, I feel Shit. like soccer would be perfect for a DJ because there's like a constant noise. Yeah. You know, it's not like football where it's like pause, go, pause, yeah. go. It's like constantly. You know what's cool, too? So this year... A lot of my ideas I've had for a while are starting to now open up. Um, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty because the sale took so long and the, the ownership thing was kind of up in the air. So we kind of held back on ideas, but this year we're, we're letting them out. And so, for example, at the home opener, the home opener last weekend, uh, we started what I call the players playlist. So the players get to like text me kind of their joints, oh, that's, that oh, that's get high, them that's excited, high. get them pumped up, whether they're at practice, whether it's right before the game. Um, in the locker room, um, and then I get to like feature it. Uh, they put me up on the jumbo screens, and and then I drop like that set during pregame when they're like warming, warming up, up. They're out there getting the fans hype. So stuff like that, we're starting to like get more creative with it, and that, that hypes cool. them up. And I even saw on Twitter that like you're. When you're doing those things, uh, when you're doing those sets at yeah. Real, yeah. that people are like, dude, you nailed it. So the question I have is, have you played the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I got a request. Shout out my boy Andy Munoz. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he, he had a hot tweet yesterday asking me to play uh, the Ninja Rap song from the original Ninja mm. Turtle video. And I, and I told him, I said, listen, bro, you already know I got it on deck. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a Ninja Turtle kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, so with Real Salt Lake being a huge place, and I mean, obviously it's not like a, a venue or anything, but dude, you've done, you've done so many different things with like Twilight Concert Series or yeah. the Tower Theater and, and yeah. places like that. Yeah. What's the biggest show that yeah. you've DJed or, you know, performed at? Yeah. Might be Real. I mean, that place freaking Yeah, weird, I mean, right? that's what, like 28,000, something sick. like that? Mm-hmm. That's sick. It's probably Real, to be honest. Hell and yeah. I don't even realize that until you say it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was trying to think about it. I'm looking at yeah. the different things that you've right. done. And, and or you've done Summer Jam, yeah. So that Ooh, yeah, I mean, obviously our big, shows, big right? Big that too. was it, right? Like those were definitely the first biggest ones. You know, those pull about anywhere between five to eight thousand people, depending mm-hmm. on the show. So yeah, that's a lot of people. But going back to it, I think it's real. Yeah, yeah, you get a, fat, a stacked one. house in there. Wild. You've DJed stadiums, bro. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Put that. Yeah, there's oh. a cap in your feather. You're welcome. Cut the call Gotta me Mark. Update my for LinkedIn, me. y'all. Yeah. We're you guys help me with that? We're, yeah, we're, okay, cool. Yes. Now stadiums, let's go. <laughs> All right, I have. Uh, I only have two more questions. Okay, but, but then let's and then go. and then we'll open them up. We'll freestyle. Then we'll freestyle. Okay, if you have questions we're for us, we're versus but battle of questions. If I say Dark Sky Paradise, yes, let's talk about that oh. because I, you know, I saw a plaque that you received. Um, yeah, uh, you really dug uh, in, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I found did, me out, dude. Huh? Yeah, I did. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> I'm a professional. You are good at this. I'm a goddamn <laughs> You're good professional. At this, man. You are. So, tell Co. If I say dark, dark sky paradise, tell tell us what that means and what plaque you received because I think that's monumental in in, in my eyes. It's really wild. So uh, that's it's one of my favorite albums from Big Sean, and Sean has been the best. Like I, I root for Sean because once again, you know, my perspective is a little different. I get to meet these guys. I got to interview them. I got to get the content up. I got to bring it to the fans, right? Sean has never once, no matter how big he got, and I I remember his first show in Utah was at the Complex in the small room. Ooh, really? Not even all the way full to now what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like, doing halftime shows in his hometown, you know, at his football team. And and, and that that era of Big Sean was dope because – 
it's right when we caught him before he became too big where now, you know, not a lot of people are booking him anymore because he's so expensive. And um, Sean has always been the same since day one, super humble, always willing to come through. He let me bring in 50 of his biggest fans in Utah to just hang out with him the whole time. Um, and so those plaques that you see, those are actually given to uh, program directors, uh, mix show coordinators who like run mix show. Um, if the station really helped support them getting to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like, but hell yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's right. it, right? the hell out of it. Like that's the thing, right? Like that's what, that's the cool part is like, I feel like I get to connect Utah to really that industry. Cause we have like, for example, like a lot of aspiring artists, we know this, right? A lot of creatives out here like yourselves. Right. And to me, it's really cool to know, like, yo, like, Utah, we helped him get that. Hell yeah. If we didn't support that record the way we did, if it didn't sell the way it did out here, being the only station that will play Big Sean, to be real, out here, mm -hmm. if we don't do it, then it, there is no... It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not happening. It's not happening. So, yeah, so, I mean, it's cool to, to get those things, and it's awesome, but I think my favorite part, honestly, is that since then... He's always picked up my call, always picked up the Zoom when I needed it during the during, you know, lockdown and not being able to have artists in. He still Zoomed with me. Um, I've been out to his like birthday party. That was that year that I was actually at his birthday party at the um, Palladium in um, in L.A. And afterwards, he had a big kickback with all like the biggest supporters and all that. And um, I have a video of him and Janae Iko is literally sitting on the couch right next to him. And we're all singing him happy birthday. And you hear me singing it terribly. And it, <laughs> I'm just stoked to be there. And uh, yeah, that's like, once again, man, like the, the cool part is when you meet people like that in the industry who don't like awesome. just become weird. Become way they, more. They become yeah. too big. They for stay you. real. Yeah. I think that's super cool. They dude. stay real and hope yeah. is, Like you know? Drake, like, you know, no, no disrespect, but like Drake will never come to the station. Mm. Ever. You know what I mean? Like, the, I don't even think there's a check we could cut to make it happen. You know, mm. so crazy. Have you ever tried? No, I'm not going to say that. No, <laughs> go ahead. Say no, that. no, we'll, we'll have to cut it out. <laughs> We'd have to cut that <laughs> one out. I just realized that is I was, really illegal. I was going to say a funny joke about Drake, and then I said, well, no, well, we'll just, we'll just dial yeah. that back. You never know. He might come through to this show, though. <laughs> you could, man. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> never know. Cody, do you have a final question? Before well, I get dude, to my I was, finals? well, my honestly, I was just, I think it's cool to hear about like, had the personalities of these bigger artists, you know, and yeah. seeing like the good and the bad. My question would be, we talked about Mac, how Mac was like a really real one all the way through and through. Mm -hmm. Who's one that has been bad? Who's like the mm -hmm. worst one that you've talked about? Or can you say it even? Or do you want to tell us? Well, that? I'm going to be real. So um, probably one of the most notorious interviewees is Russ. Mm. Really? Like here, l hear me out. All right. Hear me out. I'm going to kind of defend him a little. All right. So if you don't know Russ's story, Russ really like pioneered a lot of ways for artists to get noticed by labels. So for example, he did this thing where he made like a song every week or something for like a year on SoundCloud. And he built his own following from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. And then the label started to call him and trying to get him to sign. And even then, I have a story for that. And I hope... I don't come off as some big name dropper. I, now I feel like that's all I'm doing in this. No, but no. I just want to share for you. <laughs> I wanna, yeah, I we're almost forcing you, story. almost making you bring it out. Forcing this. Actually. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, good. This is Morgan's narrative. All right. So I was actually there when he received his first advance from the major label at the time, which was, I believe, Columbia. I was in Arizona. I got invited to see him because this is right when they were picking him up and about to work a single. They invited some West Coast program directors to come to his show. It was this little small show in Arizona. And I was standing next to him backstage. We were chopping it up. And his manager comes up and goes, yo, did you check your phone? He checked it, got his first advance from the label. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, basically labels will advance them a money, uh, amount of money that they think they'll be able to definitely cover based on shows, based on whatever, right? Consumption. And, um, but Russ was even smarter than that and like knew that, you know, major labels, when they do that, it all seems great. But if you don't deliver you kind of owe that back. It's like a loan. You have to think of it as a loan, right? That's where a lot of young artists who don't get educated about the business, they get screwed, right? Mm -hmm. Luckily, Russ like knew what he was going to be able to do. So not only did he recoup that and then some, but he used that to get his way out of it. 
right? Really? And and really like, I mean, I see him like doing what other artists aren't doing, which is like, um, for example, he just released a remix with a girl on from TikTok. Dude, my girlfriend is obsessed with that song, bro. Yeah. Obsessed he's, with that. What what's her name? Caitlyn. Big on TikTok. That's yeah. those are that's how he's always thought. And the cool thing is, is like, so I know his journey was different. I know that he kind of feels like he doesn't owe radio and all these traditional things really any, really anything because he kind of built it himself. However, you know, not with me, but other people I've put him in the room in the interview, he's been like real difficult. Like, mm. he'll, like it's like you could tell he doesn't want to be there. It's interesting. You know, it was kind of like the label making him do it. Uh, gotcha, you know what gotcha. I mean? It was yeah, like yeah, going yeah. back to that. So it's always those guys, I feel like. Interesting. Um, Being forced to do it and not wanting to yeah, do it. Yeah, but... Honestly, I, I still I still see what he's about and what he stands for. And he's just trying to show people at the same time, I think, like, don't just buy into what media is throwing at you. Yeah. What's up? You know, mm-hmm. like, like this shit's just, you know, they have reasons for doing this like I do. Yeah. Right. And he's just real blunt about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that rubs. And, and also, too, I think we have a problem in my industry where, like, you know, people get such huge egos sometimes like in especially in like bigger markets you know that they feel like you know unless their ass is kissed you know right like why am i doing why am i doing yeah, but, then they won't, yeah. but on why the same I? breath <laughs> they won't do their due diligence and prepare like mm. you guys did they'll just they'll almost forget that it's coming and then they're just asking the same 21 questions right right oh where'd you get your store how would you, you know, like... Well, shit, you're going to love my last question. Right? <laughs> you're going to love my... Backfire! You're going to love my last question. I'm sorry, bro. Here we go. <laughs> with with how successful you've been, I mean, I think of everything that you've done, you know, being on a major radio station to playing huge shows and yeah. meeting incredible people. When you think back to, you know, being 10 years old, Rasputin yeah. Records, yeah, Berkeley, California, yeah. buying your first Snoop Dogg, doggy style uh, record ever... Morgan out here. What would you What would you tell yourself then? Morgan is the future. What What would <laughs> you t- What would you tell your younger self? Um. You know, I I don't know. I I don't think I would give the cheat codes away. To be honest, I know that's not the traditional answer. You got to go through that shit. That's a good answer. Dude. Because to be honest, I don't think I would have endured as much as I did too, though. Right? With every up, there's a down, and you know. Once again, not everything is sweet, right? These are all amazing things that I could look back on, but at the end of the day, it's still a grind, still a hustle, still a business, like you said. And um, I think the only thing I would tell my younger self would probably be more along the lines of, like, um, stay true. You know what I mean? Don't let things change you. Don't let things sway you. Don't... um, you know, let the magic of certain things or this or that or the promise of this or that, like, deter your inner compass because that's the one thing that I could think of through the whole thing that we just talked about that helped me was staying grounded, staying true to myself, staying authentically true to who I am, not being afraid to, like, be a dork because I'm kind of a dork at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, shit like that, you know? I would just reinforce that with my younger self. Like, don't, don't feel like, you have to like put up a facade for this or that just because you walk into a room and it's like that, you know? Yeah. I think those are the things I would say. I love that. I love I, that I answer, mean, man. I, I think the I, highs, the lows, the lows is what builds you. And you know? I, yeah. Guys, I, I don't even think there's even more to say after that. I think, you know, you heard it from the man himself, Iraq. Right. Yeah. Um, if people want to follow you, contact yeah. you, where do they find you? It's just Iraqalypse on everything. Iraqalypse. Yep. And uh, U92SLC.com and also U92SLC on socials. Um. Yeah. Just any any love and support, man. Let's be friends. Hell That's yeah, it. dude. Let's do it. And Let's we we want to we want to say thank you so much for being for here. real for real. We, thank you so much for shedding some light on all this, man. We really appreciate you having here. So thanks, guys. That's a, that's another episode for you guys. You, uh, Koa, tell us where they can find us. You can catch these podcasts on all sh- major streaming networks, including Spotify and Apple, and then catch this video on YouTube and our website. And this episode drops every, or these episodes drop every Tuesday. Oh, wait, wait. Promo for our... uh, One last thing. Yes. One last thing. We have an event. So we want you there. Uh, uh, March 24th, 
7 p.m. We're going to be talking about all things digital media, obviously, but it's marketing for noobs. We're going to be going over everything from SEO to organic marketing. Yes. It's free. We're going to have swag. We're going to have guest speakers. We're going to have food. It's going to be sick. So March 24th, 7, 7 p.m. PM. Here at Church of State. And we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys. Yo, support my guys. These guys are, these guys are legit. <laughs> 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 Oh, 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 oh,